Welcome back guys. It is thrift flip time. We are once again doing a Christmas flip. Um, I am trying to finish up some of the items that I had gotten back in my great big haul I did a couple months ago, along with a few other items I've picked up. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be flipping my booth from fall, Halloween fall to late fall Christmas and I need to finish up some items to get it all set. We're going to start out with this cute metal sleigh that I picked up. Now one of my favorite things to pick up from the thrift stores are sleighs or trucks or that kind of thing because they always do really well for me when I add just a floral arrangement and kind of uh, just switch up their look. Most of them are outdated and just need a little bit of love. So always be on the lookout. I've been picking these up throughout the entire year and I just put them away and save them until it is time to bring in the seasonal holidays. So we're going to start with this metal sleigh and I really like all of the detail on it, but I don't like the colors. I don't like how dark it is. Um, I know that, you know, the late fall and Christmas, it can be rainy and dark and kind of moody, but I don't like how dark this one is. So I'm going to brighten it way up with some white chalk paint. And I'm just gonna do two coats on each side. Now I'm gonna do this one side at a time. I'm just gonna take some chalk paint, um, get I usually water it down just a little bit but I think I'm just gonna go in with it full force here and give it a really good layer let it dry and then go in for a second layer after that dries pretty much immediately I'm gonna go back in and do a wet distress on it um I go back immediately because if it if I let it set for too long it gets almost too tough to wet distress it back and then you actually have to sand it so I did not want to have to do that in case it would be too harsh and take the colors that I'm wanting to pop through the white. So I just took, I like to do like a baby wipe or a wet paper towel, but also have a dry paper towel nearby. That way if I'm going and um, you know, it gets too wet, the paint just kind of smears. You can use that dry paper towel to wipe it off and it will give it that nice crisp look that you're looking for. So I'm just gonna go through and give this a good scrub in on all of those raised edges to let those holly leaves and berries kind of pop through and give it that color. Um, and I'm also going to do that on all of this like gold um, wire trim basically that it's all trimmed out in and let those colors pop back through just to give it a really good contrast and really brighten this piece up. I'm doing this one set side at a time. That way, the like I said, the paint doesn't set too too long to not cause myself any um, issues. I mean, it's not going to be a big deal, but it's just going to be much easier if I do it right away. So once I was done with that first side, I just flipped it over and went to town again. Um, of course, before I started this whole process, I removed any stickers and did clean it up and give it a good wipe down. And then once that's done, I'm going to hit it with the Rust-Oleum 2X um, clear mat um, sealer that I have. Now, I, it has been brought to my attention that some people are confused because I call this 2X um, clear mat spray that I use a sealant and I also call it a primer, but that is depending on how I use it. So it is 2X as in it gives you twice the amount of coverage in a single use as it, a normal spray paint would give. Um, I use clear as in the color and a matte as in the finish type and I use it as a sealant. That is what it is made for. However, you can also use it, you know, you seal something in at the end of the project. Like once everything is set and how you want it to do, you give it a nice good coat, it seals it in. However, say you have a wood project you're working on and you're getting um, some bleed back because it's an older wood or it's just, you know, staining through and you can see it. You would also use this to prime this piece and seal in any of those stains or any of those problem areas that you're doing. You just spray it on, let it dry, and then once you go back to do your painting or whatever you're doing, it's going to seal in those stains as a primer would. So I'm sorry if that's been confusing for anyone. Um, when I state that I use the Rust-Oleum 2X, I'm stating this is the spray paint I use. This is the, the type. The Clear is the color of spray paint I'm using. The matte is the finish type that I'm using because there are different options. This is just my preference. And then I'm either using it as a sealant to finish a project and set it and make sure it's protected or as a primer where I seal in any problem areas during the prep steps 
um, and then move forward from there and then I seal it again. So it's all the same product, but it just depends on if I'm using it as a primer or if I'm using it as a project sealer. So it's all the same product. I just wanted to clarify because I did have um, a kind of nasty comment come my way about how I'm doing that. So if you guys ever have any areas where you need me to help clarify, I am more than happy to do so. I just prefer you to do it in a nice way. I'm not afraid of um, constructive criticism at all. That's how we all grow and learn. So if you ever see or I say something and you're just not sure or you know something to be different, I am more than happy to take in that information and learn from it because I am not a professional, you guys. I do this for fun. This is a hobby for me. I just love to share my work with you so that I can maybe help you grow on something maybe you weren't so sure how to do or something you're not quite sure how to do or maybe you take my product or what project or whatever I'm working on and it inspires you with those certain techniques to do a different project. That is the whole point of my channel. Half the time when I'm doing these projects, I'm learning as I go. I like to just try new things. I like to just jump in. I don't always have a plan. And all I'm here to do is to share with you guys what worked for me, how I'm doing it, where I'm going. Um, and if I do something wrong or if I mess it up or I misunderstand what something is, I am more than happy to have you guys help educate me because that's that's what it's all about. Just please be nice. I don't have any tolerance for um, any rude comments or just like completely misaligned comments on, that's not what we're here for. We are here to bring joy and inspire each other. So again, um, happy to take some as constructive criticism or comments or helpful tips. Love them, leave them. If you're gonna be nasty, Go on out the door because you are not welcome on my channel. You're not going to come be rude to me and you're not going to become rude to my followers. That's just not what we are here for. So I just wanted to share that, clear up any miscommunications that we may have had about that specific pro product. Um, so I hope that's helpful. But moving forward, all I'm going to do is I found this adorable little Christmas tree in a little wooden box. I don't want to touch this Christmas tree other than add um, one of the pine cones came off. So I peeled off the old hot glue that was there re-hot glued it on in that spot and then I'm just going to put a small dab of hot glue on the bottom of this box to set it in the sleigh and help it stay put but only a little bit that way if someone in the future wants to do a different arrangement or sees a different vision for this sleigh they can just pull that out and they'd have two great pieces so that's what I'm going to do I think they look great together I think the white really um, kind of modernized the sleigh and brought it back to life and then that green tree just made everything kind of tie together and pop and I think this project turned out adorable. You guys can let me know what you think about it in the comments below but I'm very pleased with it and uh, honestly it's already sold. I had a craft fair right in the middle of me doing this video and um, all of my sleigh sold. Thankfully I had found a couple others that I was able to flip so I can still stock my booth with them. Um, so yes, next we have this wooden sleigh that I found. This one is very much handmade. Um, you can tell the cuts are kind of crooked. There's still even pencil marks on it where the person had kind of drawn out and hand cut this piece and put it together. And I don't know if they just left it unfinished because that was the look they were going for or if they just never got back to it. Either way, it wound up in my hands and I just really want to give it the life that it deserves because it's so cute and I know that someone worked very hard on this. So I wanna keep that kind of natural wood look. I'm not even gonna erase the pencil marks. I really think that brings the character of that handmade feel to it. So I'm just gonna use some watered down Waverly antiquing wax and brush that on the front and the back side of the sleigh, wipe off any excess and let it dry. For the reins on this one, I'm going to be painting those red with just some red acrylic paint. And I'm going to do two coats because that first one's not going to be quite as bright as that wood, raw wood kind of absorbs it. So I did two coats for that. And then we're going to make a cute little design. For this design, I am wanting to do a lie. First, I did seal it with polyacrylic. I sealed it just to um, polycrylic, not acrylic, polycrylic. Um, but I did go ahead and seal it in place just to make sure every, you know, the paint's not going to get scratched very easily and just kind of give it a little more durability. Um, and I then <laughs> did a design. So I have 
been gifted these little, um, they were candle rings, like they sit around a candle. Um, they look like little miniature wreaths, but they're made for candles. Um, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to do the word joy, but use that as the O. So I just measured that and then I went on to my Cricut Design Space, create, you know, pick the font I wanted and created the J and the Y for it. Um, I did leave the spacing as if that wreath were going to be there. Um, just by using, you know, a circle shape insert the same size so that I could space it out, get, you know, the feel that I was wanting. And then I deleted that circle and cut out the J and the Y, leaving that space the way it needed to be. Um, create a stencil with some contact paper. If you haven't seen me do this before, I have somehow made it work. I know this doesn't work for everyone, but on the washi sheet, sheet setting with some contact paper, I am able to make cheap stencils that work really well. Um, they stick well for me just the right amount and then I can peel them off without them peeling up any of my paint or causing any damage. So I use that. So I just um, reverse weeded it, put it down on the project where it needs to go. And then I'm going to use some regular Mod Podge to do a layer to catch any bleeding that would, would happen. What this is going to do is any um, of that Mod Podge that would seep out from the first layer of paint. It's going to go ahead and bleed, but you won't notice it and it'll leave you a nice crisp stencil. So I did that, let that dry, and then I went ahead and did just some white on, um, yeah, I guess I didn't seal it yet. Sorry guys, as I do this, I'm recalling what I did and sometimes my brain doesn't work. So since I did stencil it on and it wasn't vinyl, um, I went ahead and stenciled that on and I'm just using a stencil brush and kind of a um, circular motion to do it. And then on the second layer, I always do two coats, which I don't think I filmed this part. I just use a softer bristle brush and, brush and paint it over it to make sure it was nice and smooth. And then I peeled that off and I sealed it with polycrylic after that because I wanted to seal in the letters with the rest of the sleigh. It's coming back to me now. Um, and then I'm just going to hot glue this little candle wreath in the middle as the O. And I was kind of worried about it not sitting flat and I almost cut off the back of it, but I figured the hot glue might help me with this and it worked better than I thought. Um, my hot glue was nice and hot. So as I put it on there, those are just like little plastic um, pine pines or whatever. Is that what you call them? Pine needles? There you go. Um, and it just melted them and gave me a nice flat area that would ad adhere really well. And I hot glued that on and I added a piece of the wire jute um, to the front, there was already um, pre-drilled holes, but they weren't very crisp or clean. So I just stuck a screwdriver through there, cleaned out any of the wood chippings that was left in there and then added that so that it could be hung up. I think this is super cute. I love that this was someone's creation at one point that I got to um, kind of give life to. So I would also love to hear about how you guys feel about this one. Um, I think it turned out super adorable and I'm very happy with it. For the third project, we are going to be doing a truck. Now, um, I don't know if you saw my fall truck, but I picked both of these up at Menards and they were on, I think they were like 50% off because they were off season. These trucks were from the spring. Now, originally I wanted the truck to be more of a red tone for Christmas, but then I found this really beautiful Christmas arrangement from Walmart that was the exact same like gold manila tones as this truck. And I had a feeling it was going to come together beautifully. So I left it as is, but just used some of that um, Waverly antiquing wax on a paper towel and dabbed all over the truck to kind of dirty it up a little bit, give it a little bit more texture and dimension um, since this truck was so bright. Um, I didn't want it quite as bright because it is the you know, a fall Christmas theme. And then I just cut down some floral foam to fit in the back, um, glued that down, and then was ready to just add in. So I took apart this arrangement from Walmart and then just put the stems in individually to create what I was looking for. And I think it turned out really well. They have these big, beautiful flowers and these ornaments and these this greenery. Like, I love this arrangement. Um, so if you are in Walmart, check it out. See if they have any left in stock because they, I've really been enjoying their florals this season. For the truck, we're just gonna call it good. Um, I, it's such a simple flip and so easy to do. And the, you guys, these trucks do so well 
for me. Honestly, it doesn't really matter which season. Um, so if you are able to get your hands on one at a decent price because they can be expensive, um, then I say snatch them up because usually they're a hot seller. The next one we're going to do, I have this small lantern that I um, was able to find. It originally had an electronic or like a battery operated candle in it, but the candle doesn't work, not even with batteries. I don't know um, what, they get. I think it's just too old. So I did go ahead and take that out and clean this up. Now I'm not loving the brown tone of this lantern, so I am going to be giving it a paint job. Originally I wanted to just kind of do a dry brush on it and give it some different like a different tone and see if that would help but I didn't love it so I painted the whole entire top and sides black. Um, I didn't worry about the inside because it's a dark enough brown where you can't really tell um, and then I gave it a coat of the polycrylic just to try to no I did the polyurethane um, just to seal it in to make sure that that black's not just going to be scratching off. I think I just used acrylic paint um, and that's really all I'm going to do with this one. Uh, if I can find a candle to put back in it, I will. If not, I'm just going to sell it on its own. But the um, greenery around it and the, like, the florals around it are still in really, really great shape. Um, they look really good. I really like the arrangement on it. So I'm not going to touch it other than updating the paint job and kind of making it more my style. And that was pretty much it. Um, I also found another lantern you'll be seeing a little bit further in this video. I found both of these at different times, but they match really well and they were both in really great shape. So I really lucked out with that. Um, you can let me know if you would have done something different with this, but I really liked it as is. So I'm gonna be leaving it other than the paint job. The next one I did, I didn't actually film uh, me doing it because I found this beautiful swag and it has like um, fruits on it and they're kind of, I don't know, like crystallized. Like, I don't know, it's like the clear glitter that makes it glisten, almost as if it's a nice early crisp day where the, you know, the dew is out and making everything glisten. And it was beautiful. The only thing it needed was um, a couple of the sprigs started to fall out and things just need tightened down. So I didn't film that for you. It's kind of boring. It's literally just me going back in, tightening and wiring things in to make sure that they're gonna stay in place and then adding a cute little burlap bow to pull the whole piece together. Um, and adding a good hanger because there was a pipe cleaner on it. So like I said, I didn't really film that, but I do want to show this piece to you because how I found this, I couldn't tell you, but it is absolutely gorgeous. So I wanted to show it to you guys anyway, even though there wasn't much that I actually did to it other than secure things and add a cute bow. All right, this next one is also just a really quick, um, I won't even call it a flip. I'm just going to update the bow on these super cute Christmas trees that I was able to get my hands on. Again, guys, I found all of this almost at the same time. How? I don't know. I just really lucked out that day. But I don't like this, like, you know, velvety ribbon that you see on most, most items. I really just wanted to update that. But these are in perfect condition, so I don't want to touch them other than giving it a nice, really shiny, glittery ribbon. Um, so I'm just going to cut the old ribbons off, get rid of them. I have no use for them. I will never use them. So I went ahead and tossed them. And then um, I'm going to be adding this like mesh glitter ribbon that I have. I just like that deep red that it is and the shimmer. It just kind of glammed them up just a bit. So I'm going to take one piece, cut it down to the length to wrap it around each base. I'm going to fold it in half and just kind of use that to um, kind of hold everything together because the wire from this ribbon was holding that burlap on. So I'm just going to put it around, hot glue it together, and then I'm going to make two bows that, you know, are decent sizing for both. I'm just going to do that by um, kind of folding it over itself because this ribbon is one sided. You know, I'll make, make a big loop for my first one and then as I come back through, I'm going to twist it and then make my loop a little bit bigger, twist it again. And what I, what I mean by twisting is so that the front of the ribbon is showing again as I loop back through. I'm gonna wire that down in the middle and then I'm gonna cut a tail for both of them um, and kind of just cut out that triangle to give it a cute little ribbon bottom. I don't know what this is called. I'm sure it has a name. Um, and I'm going to tie that down to the back of it and then I'm going to hot glue both of these ribbons onto it and that is it. Um, if you aren't quite sure or want to know kind of how that whole ribbon things works, I do have other, I think I have two other videos where I do show you how to make a bow, um, whether you're using a two-sided ribbon or a one-sided ribbon and how to get your ribbon facing the right way. Again, you're 
you know, you want to, when you get it back to the middle, you're going to twist it to where the, the front side is facing up again. So hopefully that makes sense. But if not, let me know. I'm happy to send you the links to those videos. Or if I remember, I'll put them in the description. But as of that's it for this project. Um, like I said, I don't even know if I would call this one a flip because these were in perfect condition and I was able to get my hands on them. I just wanted to update the bows and I think they are super cute and ready to find a new home. Now this next project I think is my absolute favorite of all the flips so far. Again, this lantern. So I found this big old lantern. It's that same brownish tone as the first one. However, the little loop on the top is broken. It looks like something fell on it because it is a little um, off. Like you can tell it was kind of smashed. There's some imperfections to it, but I don't think it's smashed enough to where it's not suitable to flip and send on to a new home. So what I want to do is keep this arrangement. It's beautiful, you guys. I love how big and like overflowing and springy and just like, I don't know. I just love everything about it. So I want to keep it intact as much as possible. It's in great condition. It's not dirty. It's not, even the ribbon on it is beautiful. Whoever had this vision for this, because this definitely was handmade and hand placed. Um, I could tell, especially when I took it out that, I mean, this person had great vision and I want to keep that. So I'm going to try to get it out in one piece the best I can. I did have to remove some of the berries, pine cones, um, frocked pieces so that I didn't you know, break any of them or scrape any of them up or, um, you know, cause any problems. So I took those out and then as carefully as I could, removed it from one side, just kind of placing things on through, like threading them through to get it out. And then when I got it out, I cleaned it up really good. I just took it to the sink with some warm water and some dish soap and gave it a really good scrub in and wash in. And then I um, was able to just pat it down with paper towels and let it air dry. Um, and then I wanted to make sure there was no moisture left so we don't rust it or anything. And I'm going to spray paint this white. Now again, I'm using the 2X Rust-Oleum spray paint. And this time I'm doing it in the color white and in a flat finish. I just took it outside and gave it, I think, three really good coats. Um, just kind of sprayed it, you know, flipped it around as it dried and gave it some, you know, really good coats of that to make sure we covered up all the brown. And then this step wasn't necessary because you know, the Rust-Oleum spray paint itself um, is good, but I did seal it with the clear coat, one, to make sure that it's not, you know, not as easily to be scratched or anything, but two, I knew I was going to put this floral arrangement back in and I didn't want to scratch it before it even found its way. However, the spray paint is pretty durable, so um, it should be okay. So after I gave it two coats of the um, clear, the clear matte spray that I use, I brought it back in and I was ready to add the floral piece back. So I just very carefully threaded it back through that middle part and then added back in the berries and the leaves and you know all those different pieces that I had picked out um, and the little bird and kind of just arranged it back how I saw fit. And it turned out super cute and I was able to do it without breaking anything or scratching anything up. And I love this piece. All I did was refluff that bow that was already in there. Um, like I said, kind of rearrange it to where it met my eye a little better, but I love it. Um, like I said, the original owner and creator of this had a great... Okay, so my camera filled up with storage right as I was finishing that thought, but basically I loved the person's original vision for this piece and I just wanted to keep that moment. Um, so yeah, I love this one. Let me know so far which one is your favorite. I only have two more projects for you, so let's jump into the next one. I found this cute little metal um, mailbox and it had a cardinal on it and I immediately thought of a um, like a Santa mailbox or letters to Santa situation and I wanted to go ahead and flip it into that. Now I want to clean it up and obviously peel this cardinal off. It is just a sticker however um, I have a feeling we have issues with adhesive. So I peeled off that top layer to get down as close to the adhesive as I can and as expected that top layer just peeled right off leaving all of the adhesive behind. So I'm going to start with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel and I'm going to cover the entire piece and then put the paper towel you know over it all over the adhesive and then wet the entire thing with the alcohol and just let that sit and soak for you know three to five minutes. 
Once that time has passed, I'm going to come back. I'm going to start scrubbing it and kind of, um, you know, breaking through that layer a little bit using that already alcoholed down paper towel and a new one, a nice dry one. That way it gets some texture and a little roughness to break through some of those pieces. And I want to break through because now I'm going to use some Gooby Gone to, you know, in those areas that I'm breaking through, it's going to help it penetrate more to remove all of it. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to cover it entirely with a paper towel and then I'm going to put that Gooby Gone on there. Um, I just used the same paper towel as the alcohol. I soaked it in that Gooby Gone and I let it sit three to five minutes. I came back and it just takes a little bit of elbow grease and I can scrub that right off to remove all of that adhesive. And then after that, I wanted to get rid of that greasy, gooey, the Gooby Gone is very greasy and oily feeling. Um, but I didn't want to wet entirely the mailbox because I don't want it to rust. So what I did was I took it to my kitchen sink, set it aside, got paper towel with warm water and just soap rang it out mostly and washed it down. And then I rinsed that out and just used just clean water to wipe it down again and then dried it off. That got rid of all of that extra stuff, but it also um, didn't soak it to where we'd have issues with rusting. And I went on my Cricut and I um, created a design that I wanted for the side and the front of this piece. So I was able to find this like Santa Express, um, like little mail symbol. I just typed in um, Santa mail free on Google images and found this one. I put it into Canva, removed the background, um, downloaded it out and then uploaded it into Cricut Design Space and I was able to get it from there um, as a cut file. And then the other one, I believe was already in Cricut Design Space um, and it's an image from there. I cut those out on red vinyl. Um, weeded them and put them on my awesome transfer tape. It's like a basically like a large masking tape. Um, it works great. Transferred them on and we're calling this good. It's pretty simple, um, but I think it'd be really cute, you know, setting on your display with other things you have going on. It's um, just a little cute little detail that you can add and it works. It's functioning. So if you do have kids or grandkids, you know, you can let them put their little letters in and I think it's adorable. <laughs> And last but not least is one of the new sleds that I was able, or sleighs I was able to pick up. It's this really cute little wicker one. Um, I do need to um, take off, you know, it, one of the things broke, so it's kind of loose on the bottom. So I'm gonna remove the that wicker that's kind of wrapping it and add some floral wire to it to secure that back down. And then a couple pieces are broken, so I'm just gonna hot glue those back together to, you know, make sure that they're not going to break any further. And then I'm going to use some antiquing wax to darken this or to stain this wicker. I love the natural look and feel and like organic feel of it, but I don't like the color that it is. So I'm just gonna water down some antiquing wax and brush it on just with a chippy brush. And I'm going to do the entire thing and let it soak for a little bit. And then any excess I will wipe off. Um, and then I'm going to, I always save my antiquing wax. I have a, a specific bottle where I know this is what pre-watered down and then the other stuff the larger bottle that I know is full force and I just do that that way I can kind of control you know how dark I want it to be or how thick I want it to be and vice versa so I just let that dry completely and I'm going to use some of these frocked sprigs that I picked up from Walmart to and some red berries that I picked up from Walmart and kind of decorate it Now I'm not going to put um, floral foam in here at all and I'm not going to hot glue anything down because I don't if I do that, if someone ever tries to take it out, it's going to break the wicker and I don't want to destroy the sleigh. So I'm just going to kind of put them in, um, arrange them how I want, pull things apart and, you know, just arrange them how I want and then use some floral wire to loosely wire them to the bottom. That way not everything's going to topple out, but also to where it's not permanent. Um, that way, like I said, it can, it has many, many years in its future instead of just whatever I do. So I'm going to just kind of arrange these, pull some pine cones and kind of hide the bottom where you can see the stems and the wire. And this one is finished as well. Please, please let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Um, if you have any suggestions on what to do if I find similar items to this in the future. And consider giving me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video, if you like this content. I truly appreciate all of your guys' feedback and sweet words and wonderful comments. I know I've been kind of behind on, um, you know, responding to your comments, but I promise that I will. I always do. It just takes a little more time. I will say that we will be closing on our house this week. 
So this might be the last um, flip or DIY or crafting video you'll have from me for a while. Kind of kind of switch directions and it'll be more like house DIYs and things like that as we prep our new space so that we can move in. So just please continue to bear with me through this time as we are very busy. I am going to do my best to still drop you at least one video a week. Um, I just really appreciate your patience and your kindness. So I just love that you're here. If you're returning, thank you so much for your constant support. If you're new, consider subscribing and I'm going to take you guys in for a closer look. I'll see you next time.